Hey everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror the Card Game Investigator Guide for new players! Hello, new player! I hope you're enjoying the game. It's a good time. Today we're talking about Diana Stanley. This deck is built with a, two copies of the core set and all the cards from her cycles, which is the Circle Undone cycle. If you only have one core set, we highly recommend you pick up another or proxy the cards you don't have. It, it'll just make your deck more consistent, which will help you win better. Let's talk about Diana. Who wants to describe her for those wonderful people at home? Uh, Brendan, you can do her effect because you've actually played her. Okay. Uh, so Diana Stanley is a bit of a standout in the purple characters in that we're the only one who has like less than four brain to begin with. Uh, and to trade off for that, we have our mechanic of uh, whenever we cancel a, an effect with one of our cards... Cancel or ignore an effect with one of our cards. We can place it underneath our, our investigator card, draw a card, and gain a resource. Then we get plus one brain for each card underneath us. We can have up to five cards underneath us. So we can end up scaling up to six brain, which is pretty solid. Uh, also, have you ever wanted your ward of protections to be literally free? Because, <laughs> like, she'll do that for you. Yeah. Uh, of no with this, you scale up while also stopping the game from doing things right yeah. so like yeah you're it's kind of like playing well playing lola Hayes and that your stats aren't very good at the beginning but instead of having the your own deck sabotage you the game's deck doesn't get to play or alternatively it's also kind of like calvin where instead of having to wait for the game to literally murder you you get to stop <laughs> the game from playing and yeah. get stronger <laughs> Uh, we have Twilight Blade for one of her signature assets. Uh, I'm gonna, Bryn, why don't you start talking about this while I read what the card does. <laughs> so, there are two different types of Diana Stanley games, and there are the types where you don't have Twilight Blade, and you're just, like, kind of okay. And the types where you do, and the game doesn't get to play at all. Um, hmm. it's got a fight action on it where we can use our brain instead of our punch score. It doesn't do any extra damage, though. We're not really looking at that. The part of this that we want to use is the part where we get to play our events that are under play or commit our events that are underneath us again. So we can just rebuy all of our ward of protections and our dodges and our cancel effects a second time. Yeah. Seems good. And then they just go into your discard like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, they don't even remove them from the game. Whoa, that's crazy. Cool. Uh <laughs> Uh, and then there's also Dark Insight, which allows you to cancel a card. Uh, yeah, this uh, this may be one of the most powerful cancel effects in the game. Uh, you just get to cancel an uh, you can cancel an encounter card or a weakness. Yeah, the weakness is pretty uh, huge. Like it doesn't yeah. like discard it like uh, Water Protection does, but it still stops it from that turn, right? Yeah, yeah, it gets shuffled back into its deck, but you know, maybe uh, maybe not having somebody draw their weakness and have to deal with that this turn. Yeah, probably a good thing. It's probably a good thing. Uh, we also got terrible secret. If there are no cards beneath Diana Stanley, shuffle this back into your deck. Otherwise, for each card beneath her, you must either discard that card or take one horror. Note: this card cannot be canceled. Yeah, if this card could be canceled, it would be incredibly trivial. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As as is, it's uh, it can it can be pretty tough, but uh, you know maybe if you can't survive only keeping maybe two or three of your cards, you're dying anyway. Yeah, and maybe you'll just like draw this on the second turn and be like have one card underneath you and be like yeah. I'm invincible. Yeah, it's it's also sort of got that shell shock factor to it, where if you if you see it early on, it does literally nothing. It just cancels your draw. Yeah, yeah. But I can definitely see if there's five cards underneath you, this yeah. could provide some tough decisions to make. But tough decisions make yeah. the game fun. So live in those moments. Um, I think at that point, you do want to at least get rid of some of them. Like, I think staying, keeping with three beneath you is pretty consistently good if that horror doesn't kill you or put you into a bad place. To stay at four yeah, brain... Yeah, it, uh, it does increase the value of any horror soak you might have in your deck. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you just draw this and you're like, well, I guess the Holy Rosary's gone. <laughs> uh, 
All right, well, let's uh, jump onto some of the core set cards that are in this deck. We have Machete. So one thing I will note is that this is built without the Taboo list, because if you're a new player, you, should, you shouldn't be playing with the Taboo list to start. Live the days when we all put Machete in our deck, and now it's a card <laughs> that I always forget about. Um, Those heady days of power. Yeah. Uh, so Machete just makes you attack really <clears throat> pretty good. Like, you attack for four, that's pretty notable. You'll be able to get through some stuff, especially with a few... Uh, um, uh, fist symbols here and there but it also deals pretty good damage yeah like fork punch is pretty comfortable yeah. and then like two damage is like kind of the minimum for where you want to be fighting stuff at yeah um also like unless you're in like a four player group and if you're playing with three other people you should not be the only person who can fight monsters but you're very rarely going to be overwhelmed with enemies you're very rarely going to be engaged with more than one at three two or obviously one player counts yeah uh, we have Shriveling, which is when you get your brain up really high, you're going to be, like, attacking really good. Uh, once again, is um, you have to kind of get to that point where Shriveling becomes good, but you'll probably get there really quick, especially with this build. Once you get to the cards that cancel things, you're going to see just how easy it is to get cards underneath Diana in this game. Put them in the basement, as Bryn always says. <laughs> you just lock them up in the basement. You don't need them. Uh, we got Holy Rosary, which uh, increases your brain, which is good in this deck, because then you can get as high as 7 with just Holy Rosary and 5 cards in. That's that's a pretty high brain count, folks. That's like a trivial brain. <laughs> like That's like trivially yeah. high. Yeah. Yeah, it also does make the, whenever you're canceling one of the treachery cards, it's uh, you're like, I could just eat this test, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Arcane Initiate, she helps you find your spells, which is... Great. Always a good thing. Uh, she also dies pretty quick, so that Doom on it isn't that scary. One thing you should be aware of as a new player, a uh, great time to play her is when the Doom would tick over next turn, because then she stays in play and can soak damage in the future. Or just grabs more cards as well. Uh, we got Dodge. Here's the first thing that cancels, uh, cancels attacks. Yes. Dodge can go in Diana's basement. Mm -hmm. And, uh, with the reaction ability, it's effectively free. We get the resource back, we get the card back. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that ability is also limit once per phase, so this dodge will most likely be used in the enemy phase, yeah. where you're less likely to cancel things. You're most likely to cancel things in the uh, uh, mythos phase. Yeah, it's usually, usually in the mythos phase. We got drawn to the flame. Gives you two cards. Uh, two clues, sorry. Two clues, and then uh, <laughs> maybe you can cancel what's on top or just tank it because her... Her stats are pretty, like, fine. Pretty suitable in everything around. Um, yeah, there's, it's very rare that you're going to be drawing a treachery card that you can't handle one way or another. Yeah. Uh, it also allows you to, gives you another, another opportunity to trigger your ability during the investigation phase. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Emergency Cash, which gives you money, which lets you play your cards. That's a good thing. As I think we've said every time for Emergency Cash. <laughs> Yeah, not being able to play your cards is much worse than being able to play them. Yeah. It's also not fun. Exactly. Uh, we have Evidence, which is after you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. As you can see from this deck, you have various ways to kill small enemies, so this is a good way for you to get clues. It also commits for two books, so worst case, it's a perception that doesn't draw you a card. Yeah. You could just bump up to five and try to investigate normally. Yeah. Uh, we got Ward of Protection, so this card is like double good in this deck, as Bryn was saying earlier. Like, it's good, but it's, like, double good here. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's even better than normal. Yeah. Uh, because it says cancel. Cancel that card's effect. That's just very mm -hmm. important for you to realize if you're playing Diana for the first time. We got Vicious Blow, which helps you kill. Most notably also can help something like your... Uh, uh, just It gets you to that two damage, which, as Travis said, is where you want to be for when you're dealing damage to enemies. All right, let's get to the circle yeah. on... Du oh, no, just kidding, Justin. There's these cards. Always good. Guts, especially for her. Uh, Guts is just generally good. It's it's in every deck that we yeah, uh, have done here. It's, it's quietly like one of the strongest colorless cards in the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, Overpower is also just fine as a one of here to help her. As, we, as you can see from this build, you're kind of built to deal with enemies as they show up. Uh, and this will help you get there. And Unexpected Courage is just, it's a, it's a good card. Especially for a yeah, starting let's deck. Yeah, lets you test anything at five. Yeah. Or if you're at full, you can test your brain for nine just to flex yeah. on the game. And then draw the auto fail and be like, well, what did I expect? 
I'm not sure what I expected here. <laughs> All right, now we're at Circle Undone. So most notably here, we got Sixth Sense. This card can make you can, uh, investigate pretty consistently, especially when your brain gets very high. That's nice. You contribute to the team and everyone likes you. Uh, we got Enchanted Blade, uh, which once again goes with the attack thing here. And it, um, yeah, because you can attack at five fist if you use one of the charges, which is pretty good. Five attack and two damage will mm -hmm. consistently kill uh, most of the enemies that may show up that just need to be picked off. Yeah, it does have the, the downside of taking up the arcane slot as well is this is probably the only deck that's ever going to care about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not even that steep of a price. Like you want, you want your enchanted blade or your, your melee weapons early in the game. Yep. And not so much late in the game. Uh, Diana's pretty fun to see and like watch play because she's kind of like a brawler spellcaster. It's a pretty cool uh, play style to see take shape. We got Delay the Inevitable. So this says can uh, cancel all damage. When you're dealt damage and or horror, discard Delay the Inevitable and cancel all horror and or damage just dealt. There's that keyword again, cancel. Those are the things you want to be looking out for with Diana. Yeah, uh, this card's like not super great for Diana, but... Uh... It's here because it cancels things, and you only have so many options for that. Yeah. Uh, we also have Deny Existence, which, with on the flip side, is a very good card that says Cancel. This card is yes. crazy. Yeah, yeah this, this one, even, even better in Diana, this card is also one of your economy cards. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, last from the uh, non-upgrade, we have Steadfast. Which is just commits for relevant symbols. Just give symbols. you the stats you want. Yeah, these are the relevant symbols in this deck, 100%. Uh, and she actually is pretty good. Uh, her stats for, she's not squishy in either of her stats, which kind of once again fills that role of her being this kind of weird magic brawler, which is nice. It's fun. But let's get to the upgrades. On the core set, we got Police Badge. You're under arrest. I'm Diana Stanley. <laughs> uh, you get plus one brain, so you can get up. Oh my god. Nope. They take the same slot. Dang, my dream is done. <laughs> Still, seven is really high. Uh, and then it also allows you to take additional actions. And worst case scenario, it's also a guts as well. If you already have your Holy Rosary out and you really need two extra brain for some reason because seven isn't enough. Yeah, maybe maybe you just drew your Dark Insight and had to discard a bunch of cards and yeah. your brain score is looking a little weak. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Grotesque Statue is a very, very strong card. Bye. Bye. Uh, it allows you to reveal two chaos tokens instead of one and choose one to resolve, which sounds like yeah, it's not you, too amazing, but it, it, trust me. It, it says you get to ignore the other one, which means that when you're running low on tokens, you can put it in the basement. It does say ignore. Cancels yeah. or ignores. Oh my god, the gross test statue can go in the basement? I love it. It's even so, better. Even better. <laughs> Alright, let's get into these, uh, Circle Undone ones. Upgraded six cents. Uh, if you want to investigate at nine brain, you can do it. Uh, what's also notable is that uh, this one is one of the few spells, uh, not one of the few spells, but from this cycle, these are the spells that have a positive effect when you draw one of those tokens, which means in uh, conjunction with something like Grotesque Statue, you could potentially make sure you hit those a lot more consistently. Um, albeit, I don't know why you would probably want to use Grotesque Statue when you're investigating with that much brain, but maybe you just want to flex on the game a bit, or put Grotesque Statue into your basement, as I'm learning you yeah. can now do. Yeah. Uh, Bryn, why don't you talk about upgraded Enchanted Blade? Oh, man. So, Purple Enchanted Blade, the only thing that's stopping this from being one of the best weapons in the game is the fact that it's purple. And there are very a very limited pool of investigators who can both play level 3 and purple cards and want to fight with their fist. Diana Stanley is like pretty much the only one. Maybe Jim Culver, but like mostly Diana Stanley. So with this Enchanted Blade, we get four charges, as opposed to the three that the previous one get, got. Uh, this one gives us plus two attack all the time, if we even if we don't spend any charges. And then we can spend up to two charges for the attack. And for each charge we spend, we get an extra plus one and deal an extra plus one damage, which is just some pretty real pretty reasonable action efficiency yeah because if you can get to three damage that is what we call the asphalt off hump 
which is uh, <laughs> which is uh, how the game is designed. The enemies that are tougher have baseline three health because it takes you more time to get through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this helps but even you... if you're you go, Bryn. Yeah, even even if you're not spending the extra charge, like a weapon that just gives you plus three to your attack test and deals plus one damage is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we got upgraded deny existence, which sounds when you read it and you're like, "Whoa, is this really what this card says?" I can assure you, yes, it does do that. <laughs> you ignore the effect and then perform <laughs> the opposite of that effect. Whoa. <laughs> So it yeah, says, so if you've got your Twilight Blade, you can do this twice. Yeah, I love it. And it's also like, discard, it's like, discard three cards. You're like, nah, you know what, game? I'm going to draw three cards, increase my brain score, draw another card, and then gain a resource. Wow. Or even just Yeah, take, that one's really kind of over the top. Yeah, or even just take damage. It's like, uh, you know what? No, I'm going to heal, draw a card, gain a resource, make my brain score higher. It just feels so fun and strong. It does cost five experience. However, when you're going from just your own cycle, um, uh, because the things are limited, uh, you'll be able to f- get stuff like this and feel fine picking stuff like this. And I mean, like, level five deny existence is an insane card. It's insane. It's insane. Is that it? No, it's not. Uh, why don't one of you guys talk about Diana Esperance? Oh, you've played Charles. her a bunch. Yeah, you've played her a bunch. Oh, uh, yeah, hmm. Diana's like... So she's an ally, which means she competes for a usually highly wanted slot. In this list, you've only got Arcane and shit, though. Um, she provides a health soak, which is like kind of nice, but you don't really want to have her take damage. What you really want to do is you want to stick your level 5 deny existence on it and then laugh <laughs> at the game every time it tries to do anything to you. Yeah. Ever. Like, gain a cast a spell for free like every turn for three turns is so good <laughs> yeah i know like i know they're probably thinking but travis that means that i can't put it in the basement that doesn't matter when you get to play it so many times yeah i'd rather like, it yeah. doesn't matter how many cards in your basement when you're playing deny existence every turn or ward of protection every turn yeah it's it is the one brain is not worth what she can provide with those cards yeah, or drawn to the flame every turn. Oh, like baby, this is just so much free stuff. Yeah, it's like essentially having, uh, look at it like this, four like you'll have four copies in the deck, and then three of them are free, right? It's great, and then maybe you have another. Yeah, she's one. like really good. You should play with her and just like see how strong she is she even has like double brain icons in case you draw a second copy though i'd probably just like have it in my hand for when this one's done <laughs> yeah <I'd be> like, <laughs> just hold on to it until the other one runs out of secrets exactly yeah. exactly uh we also have i've had worse which does cancel um so you can go in her basement uh and also it's just... like the good version of i had worse yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah the other one's really cool but this one is much more reasonable mm-hmm. it's a lot more use like you're gonna get full use of it a lot more often Mm -hmm. yeah with the other one you're gonna like hold it back a lot you're being like "Ah, i could take a bigger hit with this one you're like hey let's just gain some resources and cancel this damage and do all that yeah like the other one's kind of kind of fun when you're going going toe to toe with somebody like ermordoth and you're like i've had worse yeah and then he hits you again you're like no i did not (laughs) this was bad uh that's it for diana uh, she is seems I have not played her. I think Bryn's the only one of, at this table who's played her. But um, yeah. she seems fun, and I would love to try her out in the future. Um, if you're watching, and you have any recommendations for cards for Diana outside of her cycle, please let comment down below the video. In addition, if you like this, uh, why don't you slam that like button? It helps to get us our uh, make more Arkham Horror of the Card Game content. In addition, it also puts our content out there for more people to see, which in turn means more content, which is just a great time for everybody. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. You guys have a good one. And as always, GG's.